Hey guys, this is Will from loopsandworship.com and I just wanted to take a second to show you how easy and how fast it is to create a set list in Ableton Live uh, to use some clicks in. Now I've seen a lot of training videos and I've seen a lot of sessions that uh, teach you how to create a click track in Ableton Live. Um, and typically what it ends up being is a you know, really long uh, roundabout way of, of using a click in Ableton. And what a lot of people don't understand is Ableton comes pre-prepared with a metronome built in and uh, some really cool functionality when using session view that we can create a set list really, really quickly um, using a click. So first off, I want to show you where our metronome is in live, how to adjust our volume, how to turn it on. To access our metronome, all we've got to do is uh, go up here to the uh, left-hand corner of our screen. And this button that's two circles, one that's open and one that's filled in black, we want to click that. And that's right to the right of our um, time signature uh, controls here. And when we click that and that turns yellow, that means our metronome is turned on. Now if I press my space bar, you're going to hear my metronome play. And it's playing at the tempo I currently have plugged into Ableton, which is 120. That's my master tempo. Now, if I want to adjust the volume of my metronome, I can do that by going over to my master track here and my right-hand side. And you see this, um, this button here. that uh, It's a knob that's blue, and it's got a headphone control on it. That's the volume control for my preview cue. So I can adjust that, and as I adjust it, you'll hear my click volume go down and then go back up. So that's really, really useful. Now one thing, if you don't see this option showing up, so if you go over to the master track and this is what your screen looks like, let me show you how to access that really quick. All you've got to do is go to the show hide button in the right um, side of your screen. We see in, out, send, and return, and this is our mixer control. So if I press that, then that's going to show some knobs and some faders. So that's how we can adjust our metronome volume. So the other thing we want to look at is how to route our metronome out. So if I'm playing my metronome here, and I'm plugging into a soundboard, typically what I'm going to do, uh, if you don't have an audio interface, and if you're just starting off with live, this is probably your situation, you're going to take an eighth to two-quarter inch adapter, and you're going to plug it into the output of your computer, and then you want to split. So one side is click, and one side is loop. Now the left side typically is your click, and the right side is typically your loop. So what I'm going to do is here is to route my click or my metronome to just the left side. I can go to my cue out here. And in this case, I'm showing 1 slash 2. Now, when we see this 1 slash 2 and we're talking about audio routing alive, essentially what that stands for is left and right. Now, 1 being left and 2 being right. So in this case, I'm going to go to Q out, which is the channel that my metronome is coming out of. I'm going to set that to 1, and I can set my master out to 2. So in this, uh, this case, if I drop a loop in, um, then that loop's going to come out of my master out channel, which is 2, and my click is going to come out of my click channel, which is one left and right. So again, if I'm using loops in this scenario, I'd be using mono loops and sending mono click to the board, and I would only put the click in the in-ears of my band, and that's a whole other discussion for a whole other day. So now, we've already seen we can use the metronome to live, um, turn it on, adjust our volume. Now let me show you how using this with session view can save you tons of time. Now this is something you could do immediately. Right now, you could start using it on Sunday morning. Uh, you could use it for your rehearsals whenever that is before Sunday. Uh, you can do this right away. So if we know how to turn our metronome on, uh, we can adjust our tempo in live. But one thing we can do in session view that's really useful is we can assign a tempo and a time signature to each of our scenes in session view. Now if we're thinking of session view um, in so much as vertical and horizontal, when we're looking at session view, our tracks are a vertical area here. So we have an audio track and MIDI track. And it's also important to note we have a master track over here to the right. And the horizontal part of our screen here in session view are scenes. Now a way to think of scenes really quickly, scenes can either be songs in a set list or scenes can be sections of a song. And that's of course a really generalized uh, way to think of scenes but that typically helps people. Songs in a set list are, are sections of a song. In this case we're going to treat our scenes as uh, songs in a set list. And remember I said we can assign tempos to scenes so I can right click can go to rename and I can type in 120 BPM and I'm going to press spacebar 4-4, 4 slash 4, 4, slash 4 excuse me. Now, if I put my mouse to the right of my master track title bar, I can drag it a little bit so I can see that fully. Now, I can go down and rename the rest of these scenes and plug in tempos for the rest of my songs. Now, to make this a little faster, I'm going to use our shortcut, which in this case is Command R. And that's my, I'm actually using my rename function. And I'm going to name my next scene 85 BPM. Let's make that 4 4. Now, one trick that's going to make this really quick uh, to go between scenes instead of finishing out renaming a scene and then uh, going down to our next one, 
when I get into my rename function, if I press tab, that's going to take me between my scenes. So that allows me to rename really quickly. So I could do 75 BPM, so 3, 4, I press tab. I'm auto automatically selected to do this. And I could do 111 BPM, uh, 4, 4 again. So now as I click through these, I've got my metronome volume set correctly. It's routed to the left-hand side, and I've got my metronome turned on. I could go up to this first scene, and if I've entered everything correctly, then my scene launch button is going to turn orange, and in this case it is. So when I uh, press the scene launch button, uh, we see nothing happen. But one thing we do see is we see our tempo is going to change. Okay, so as we go through these, 85, 111, and then 75. So we need to do one more step. Now this is an important rule when working in session view. Uh, to launch a scene in session view, and launch is a term we use... Um, in conjunction with play or fire or trigger things, but to launch or play a scene in session view, we have to have some sort of clip in session view. So in this case, I'm going to use MIDI clips. I've got a MIDI track here, and I want to create a dummy clip. Now, a dummy clip is a clip that contains no information, no audio, no data if we're working with MIDI, no notes. And all I have to do to do that is go to my clip slot, double click, and I have a MIDI clip there. So I can go through, double click for all of these. Now I've given each of these scenes, which again represents a song in my set list, a MIDI clip, a place to, to launch this clip, and now when I launch it, we hear our click come in, I can launch my next scene, and it's going to fire at 85 BPM, it's playing there, I can launch my next scene, and it's going to fire at 75 BPM, 3-4, so it's changed my time signature as well as my tempo, and I can launch my very last song at 111 BPM, 4-4. Four four. Now the great thing about this is I set these clicks up immediately. I didn't have to find a click sound, I didn't have to program a click sound. All I did is open up my session view, turned my metronome on, adjusted my volume, and we did that over here, routed my click so it's to the left, routed my loop so it's to the right, and in this case, if I'm not using uh, any loop, I don't have to worry about that. And then I went into my scenes, programmed my tempo and my time signature to each of these scenes. Then I also created a dummy clip so that each of these scenes would launch when I launched them. And as I go through and click all of these, our click is going to play. Now what's important to note, I'm going to turn our click volume down here so it doesn't bother us. Um, is what's important to note is this, as this click plays, it's going to continue to loop. And it's going to play over and over. So this is a huge time saver because if we're doing a song that's five minutes long, I don't want to have to program a click and then copy it for however many measures I need. And then if I do that, then I've got to make sure I've got the right sound, got the right tempo, and then I need to render that out and then open it up and play it in iTunes if I'm doing it that way. Now, if you know, we're in a situation like that and we need to change our tempo a bit, then we're kind of screwed because we can't go back and redo that whole process immediately. It's going to take some time. But of course, if we're using live and we say, okay, instead of 120, I want to make it 123, I'll hit back into my rename function, hop over 123 BPM, and my click is automatically programmed to run the entire length of my song. Now, of course, if we had some more time, we could go a little further and talk about key mapping, MIDI mapping, and how to do that, but that stuff we'll save for later. And again, uh, this is just incredible functionality that we can get out of live, and this is available in live intro. And as a reminder, live intro is available for typically about 100 bucks. Sometimes you can get it cheaper uh, if they're running a special or you talk to the right people, uh, the right dealer. It's around $100, um, and it gives this functionality straight out of the box so that you can program your clicks and your uh, tempos and time signatures into your set list. And again, this is something that's going to save you so much time, and this is something you could do walking into your uh, sound check on Sunday morning, something you could start using right away. So I want to encourage you to check that out, open up Ableton Live, go through the process I went through. If you have any questions, feel free to email me, will at loopsandworship.com. If you're interested in learning a little bit more, going a little more in depth, uh, send us an email at training at loopsandworship.com if you're interested in any one-on-one -on -one training over Skype or in-person training. And we also offer some Ableton Live training courses through our site as well. So make sure to check out uh, loopsandworship.com slash training if you're interested in those. And make sure to check out our blog for a lot of free info uh, and videos like these that we post all the time. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me directly, will at loopsandworship.com. And make sure to check out our site, www.loopsandworship.com. Thanks so much for listening. I'll chat with you guys later. Have a good one.